Hey babes, my name's Hannah. And my name's Chastity. Welcome back to Bookish Babes. Today we are going to be giving you guys what we think are some beginner fantasy recommendations. Yeah. Which is nice because like I was recently a beginner to fantasy and like these are all ones that were easy for me to digest and I feel like it would be the same for other people. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I, I think so. Mm -hmm. Like not too crazy, not too crazy world yeah. building, not too crazy like out of control like storylines mm -hmm. or characters. Yeah. Because fantasy can get really, really mm -hmm. in depth depending on where you're going with it. But these, these are pretty simple. For sure. Yeah. Do you want to start or do you want me to start? I can start. Okay. The first one I have is Game of Thrones. Um, the A Song of Ice and Fire series. Here's why I think this is easy to follow. I think it's because every single chapter is a different point of view. Like it rotates. So mm -hmm. you, it's, it's easy to get... I feel like it has to be that way because so many characters are located in different areas. You True. Know what I mean? So like logistically, in order to get the full story, you have to be in all of these with all these different characters but also I think it really helps because there's just like a ton of dialogue between the characters and there's not a lot of with the exception of like dragons there's not a ton of species that aren't human if that makes sense you know what I mean mm -hmm. like it's it's definitely like a medieval sort of setting um and there's not anything too difficult that you need to learn about it's pretty good about um, teaching you guys like the history too, or teaching readers the history between the houses and how they ended up where they're at in the start of the series. Like for example, you, it, it's pretty early on that you learn like the history between Ned and Robert and how Robert and Cersei ended up married and everything like that. Yeah, I um, agree. And so it's it's pretty pretty simple to follow and it's a great series. So. I will agree with this because mm -hmm. I personally was very intimidated by this series yeah. for a long time, did not pick it up. The books are very large and the show um, seemed kind of, you know, bigger than what I was expecting so I was a little intimidated but I followed this book really easily mm -hmm. and got really into the world very easily. My first recommendation would be Throne of Glass by Sarah Jamas. Um, I find that this is probably the easiest one to go into for her. Um, it's very easy to follow uh, the world, although it, you know, it can be a bit confusing at times. I feel like it's still very easy to follow. She still doesn't have like a ton of species in that one. Um, the magic system doesn't come into play until later and it's very easy to follow mm -hmm. um so starting it out is pretty simple i, I feel like akatar is a good one for beginners in a sense but the reason why it's probably not on our list is because you have to pay attention to like literally every single detail in akatar and there's a lot of like back story that can be hard to follow right i feel like every time i reread those books i like get something new mm -hmm. and i don't feel like that with throne i feel like throne of glass you can just like casually pick up and like look through and like and like read and and pick up what you need to to understand the story but there were parts of the first avatar book that i was reading where i was like wait how did what happened here like right you know you have to pay attention to every single detail you do yeah. there's like other species and you know, other even like side species like the adder and the cereal and, and things the like that. Yeah. Yeah. Hog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's why I know Akatar is probably the most popular of hers, but that's why it's not on our list. Yeah. But I feel like Throne of Glass is easier to follow because it's young adult, so it's you know, not very younger audience. Yeah. I mean, but you could really go with either. But yeah, they're both great. I wouldn't start with Crescent City. <laughs> I would not start with Crescent City. Crescent City's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot of world building yeah. there. Um, next one on my list is The High mm -hmm. Mountain Court by A.K. Mulford. I read this maybe like six months ago and really liked it. Um, it's once again one of those that it's like you get some info dump in the beginning so you're, you end up being pretty familiar with the characters and their background and how it all plays into the whole magic system. Um, and it's like a, it's sort of like a quest kind of story. Like you, they're all kind of working together for a common goal. Um, and you get great side characters and there's great banter and it's just, it's not too difficult to follow for a fantasy book. So I liked it. Okay. That's fair. Mm -hmm. 
The next one um, I want to suggest is Malice by Heather Walter. I really, really enjoyed this one. This was like a reimagining of um, Maleficent and Princess Aurora. Uh, this one had a, a pretty easy magic system to follow. Um, it was a beautiful world that was created, but it wasn't too complicated. Um, and I felt like there wasn't a whole lot of like backstory to to keep going over. Like it was kind of like the info dump in the beginning where you you got it and that was it. Like once you got it, you got it. And it was just a really, really great story and I think it's wonderful for beginners getting into fantasy. Next one I have is Ledge by Stacey McEwen. Um, once again, big info dump in the beginning so you know kind of how the characters ended up where they're at when the book starts. But also, contrary to a lot of fantasy books, I think all the ones on our list are kind of longer. This one's not super long. So it's like easily digestible for people who like don't have a good attention span to like spend on a super long book you know mm -hmm. what I mean it fits in what it needs to though so it doesn't like skimp out on any details like you know what you need to to understand the story but it's not super long and it's not a big commitment so I think it'd be good for beginners true I also think this one would be good for beginners because it's not super long mm -hmm. King of Battle and Blood mm -hmm. um, by Scarlett Sinclair it's definitely considered more romance than like fantasy but it does have quite a bit of fantasy in it it has vampires and witches and I, I really thought the world was very cool and it, it doesn't go into like too much crazy detail but it was very easy to follow and it was fun and I thought it was very interesting and I think if like you're just wanting to dip your toe in this this was definitely like a quick easy read and fun and, and adventurous mm -hmm. so I, I thought this was a good one to get you started mm -hmm. um next one on our list that we wanted to mention both of us um was one that we didn't love like we didn't end up loving the series but we do think it's good for beginners and a lot of people do like it but it's from blood and ash by jennifer l jennifer l armentrout um the first book's not terrible the second book is is better than the first one and then the third one is where it all goes downhill in my opinion mm. but with that being said like our opinions aside it's very easy to follow and i think that it's because it's once again more heavy on the romance i feel like it is yeah and um there's also just not a ton of world building in general so there's not a lot that you have to follow you kind of learn it because it's somebody who's very like inexperienced outside of her little bubble so you learn it along with the character mm -hmm. which i think is an interesting way to do it yeah i agree yeah i agree um next i, I just want to say um the anita blake series which is by laurel k hamilton or honestly any of laurel k hamilton's books but specifically the anita blake series there's a lot of them mm -hmm. but um her series takes place in the United States. That's right here in our world, so it's not too crazy. But it's in a world that is, like, they know of the magic. They know that there are vampires and um, wear animals. So it's not too difficult to follow. You just have to follow, like, the magic system and the different creatures and keep your character straight, which is the part that confuses me sometimes. I get some of the characters confused but that one I think is easy to follow along with and good for beginners because like I said there's not so much world building involved it's more like character building and you just have to keep like your different species mm -hmm. um can, which is like really just like your different animal species because I mean it's vampires mm -hmm. vampires are just vampires but then you've got all the different were animals like, I see there's not just werewolves there's no, yeah. it's were animals. Okay. Yeah, there's werewolves, were hyenas, were tigers. Oh, fun. Were rats, were lions, were swans. You want know, swan, you know, some swans? Mm -hmm. We got swans. We get swans. Oh, well, swans. Yeah, there's 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 a lot of them. That's where I get a little confused. But mm -hmm. other than that, it's very easy to follow. Yeah. 
Last one on my list is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. This is another really popular one that I read recently and I actually am in rereading right now. Um, it's very easily digestible. The first chapter is like in the past, which I think is helpful because it gives you some context as to why the main character is where she's at. And then there is like info dumping as needed, but it, the magic system in general is not very difficult to understand. Um, nor is like the political system. Um, but, and it's, and it's once again like really fun. It's like very adventurous and like high action and um, not boring and very easy to follow. So I really liked The Cool Prince. You should read it too. Yeah, I have it on my list mm -hmm. for this year. Mm -hmm. The last one I'm going to recommend is The Echo Wife by Sarah Gailey. Um, this one is considered like sci-fi fantasy so uh, I put it on this list anyways because it is very easy to follow. It's more of like a lab type one. Okay. It's more, it's definitely in, in like today's world and it's more, we're going like AI type, mm. you know, mm -hmm. more, it's definitely more sci-fi than it is fantasy, but it is really easy to follow and I just think it's a very cool, fun, book that'll keep you guessing mm -hmm. and keep you on your toes um so i put it on this list because i i think it's fun to read for sure and it's definitely like something to like get you out of a comfort zone mm -hmm. and reading something different that'll kind of challenge you yeah because it definitely was not something that i was expecting but i followed it really easily and it ended up being like one of my favorite reads from the year that i read it I still recommend it. Yeah. But, okay. We're really hoping to get some more fantasy in this I'm year. I'm a big fantasy kick. It's yeah. like exclusively what I'm reading right now. Yeah. We're really trying to get some more fantasy in. Mm -hmm. So, hopefully we'll have more recommendations for you soon. Mm -hmm. I just think I, in the past when I've tried to read fantasy, I started out too high. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I'm glad that I like read some of these like lower grade fantasies to like get myself into. And now I'm able to read a little bit higher fantasy. Yeah, I think that'll be the same for me. Yeah. So hopefully soon we'll have some more for you. Mm -hmm. And if you have any for us, please comment down below. We are always yeah. looking for some recommendations for our fantasy yeah. specifically. But let us know. So comment down below. Hit that like button and subscribe. And make sure you turn on that notification bell so you know when we post next. Bye.